Hey guys, our devotion today is from Hebrews chapter 4 verses 14 through 16 and today we're talking about how God is our intercessor. But before we get into that, I wanted to remind you today, let's be in prayer or let's intercede for Bill and Irene Wade and uh, Becky Wade as well. Um, God is our intercessor. We understand um, intercessor is a word we use when we're talking about praying for people. Um, just like we're praying for Bill and Irene and Becky today, you're interceding for them. Um, and that may be sort of a strange thought. It is for me to think about the fact that God is our intercessor. What the Bible teaches that the Holy Spirit and that Jesus are interceding for us as believers. They're, they're praying for us. Uh, this particular passage in Hebrews is interesting. It catches on to this theme that goes all throughout Hebrews of God being our high priest. And a high priest was an intercessor. This was an image that would have stood out and made a lot of sense to the Jewish people, to the Jewish Christians, because they knew what a high priest did. We may think of a priest and think about someone who runs a church service or teaches scripture uh, or leads a church, but the high priest for them was one of the only people who got to go into the presence of God, got to go into the temple, into the Holy of Holies, to offer sacrifices, to pray for the nation, to ask for forgiveness of sins. And here in this passage in Hebrews, that's the image that we're getting. Jesus Christ going before the presence of God on our behalf in order to pray for our sins, in order to bring us into unity with God. There's another passage that, uh, if you have time today, I'd encourage you to read that talks about the fact that God is our intercessor. And it talks about the role of the Holy Spirit and of Jesus Christ in praying for us. And that's Romans chapter 8. Uh, starting in the second half, starting around verse 18, it begins to talk about how we go through these times of suffering. And sometimes we don't really know what to pray for. We have this weakness in our mind, in our bodies. But the Holy Spirit is there knowing God's will and knowing us, knowing us completely, and knows exactly what to pray for and helps us in our weakness, um, praying for us, interceding to God for us. <clears throat> but also, um, it continues on. I'm going to start reading uh, this passage for you in verse 31. It says, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died more than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. This whole month we've wanted to spend time meditating on who God is and just spend time blessing Him, worshiping Him. And again and again, it's so difficult to think about who God is without thinking about how we are blessed through who he is and how his goodness comes and comes to us and how we benefit from it. Um, and here we see just God's love poured out on us that he didn't just die. It was Christ who died, but also more than that, he is interceding for us in our daily struggles, in the things that threaten us, the things that make us feel like we've been separated from the love of Christ and those things are going to come in our every day. Maybe we're going to be encountering these attacks. We're encountering the 
ramifications of sin in our life, maybe even bad decisions that we've made. Um, and we're going to have that appreh apprehension that maybe we've been separated, or maybe God doesn't truly love us, or maybe God's given up on us. Here is this image of Christ constantly in heaven today, interceding for us in our times of trouble. And we can take confidence in that, knowing that there is absolutely nothing that can separate us from him today, and knowing that even when we don't know what we should be praying for, Christ is praying for us, the Holy Spirit who knows God's will is praying for us. <clears throat> we certainly ought to be praying for one another, but I, I can't think of any more encouraging thing I mean, it's encouraging today to know that your church family is praying for you. It ought to really embolden us to know that the Holy Spirit and that Jesus Christ at this very moment is interceding for us in our trials and in our temptations. So uh, I hope this is a message of encouragement for you today as you spend time with the Lord. God bless you guys.